Uh, so let's have a look at uh, cybersecurity and a little bit of uh, human and machine intelligence. Okay, so initially we'll look at what job roles there are in cybersecurity, and then we'll move on to understand what intelligent is, intelligence is, how we can use heuristics and decision making, different types of intelligence, and the differences between the human intelligence and machine intelligence. Uh, later on, we'll be looking in more detail at uh, machine learning. Okay, so what we live in is could be defined as an analog world. So we live in a world which has uh, variations in light, heat, movement, and so on. Uh, within a digital world, uh, we have uh, binary data, ones and zeros. So computers operate on uh, this binary information using codes, machine code, and even our data stored in a digital format. So overall, we need to be able to convert from our analog world into uh, a digital world. So we do that uh, where we have sensors which can sense uh, the, the, uh, the, our analog world and then that's converted into a digital form using an analog to digital converter and then that is stored or processed uh, using uh, our digital information. And then as an output, we then convert from a digital form back into an analog form and we might have actuators such as motors to be able to make things actually happen. So this analog to digital conversion is important uh, to be able to convert from our analog world into uh, our digital world. And overall, uh, our our industry has moved from what we could define as Industry 1.0 to Industry 4.0, and that's where we are now. Industry 1.0 was really the mechanisation, uh, steam-powered, water-powered engines, really brought forward that first uh, wave of industry. In the second uh, uh, form of industry, we went through electrification. That was through railways, factories, the telegram, and, and so on. And then the third industry happened uh, in the later part of the uh, 20th century where we started to, to see the rise of electronics, the electrical generator, CPUs, the internet and the web. And now we're into industry 4.0 where we see digitization and virtualization. Virtualization, artificial intelligence, cyber physical and IoT, the Internet of Things, are all key aspects of this fourth generation of uh, industry. And this often involves the virtualization of uh, things that at one time were created through hardware are now virtualized in software. Okay, one of the key standards that uh, really developed the internet uh, was the were these two here. RFC 719 defines IPv4 and 793 defines the TCP protocol. And it was these two requests for comments which really started to define how we could deliver uh, data over the internet using IPv4 addresses. And then the TCP part was brought in to allow us to be able to create data segments that could split data up and then be reassembled uh, at a, a destination. So TCP IP has been one of the core parts of building up our internet. So what does Industry 4.0 actually look like? Well, it, it brings us uh, what we could define as six Cs. Connection, that's sensors and networks. Cloud, that's computing and data on demand. Cyber, the model uh, and memory. Context and content, that gives us meaning and correlation. Community, that's sharing and collaboration and customization, which is personalization and, and value. We also can define the, the six Vs, and we'll come back to this later on uh, in these series of lectures. But with 
So the six V's of big data, we have volume, that's the volume of data that we create. Velocity is the speed at which we can create and consume uh, our data. Variety is the different formats that we could have, text and video and audio and so on. And variability uh, is really how the, uh, the data uh, changes. Uh, uh, in, in terms of our, our processing of the data and the storage of it. Veracity is all to do with the trustworthiness of the data. And then finally, and probably most importantly, the value of the data. Okay, so let's look, uh, give a brief overview of cybersecurity and some of the roles that are actually in, involved. So this define that cybersecurity is all to do with prevention of damage uh, to uh, electronic systems, the protection, and also the restoration of uh, data and services. But really, these are the key aspects here. Availability, making sure that the data uh, and the systems and the services always have a good availability to for, for users. So this might involve having backup power supplies, backup data sources, uh, uh, failover systems for servers and so on. Integrity makes sure that uh, when uh, we, we look at uh, data, we can make sure that it hasn't been changed by non-trusted entities. So there is some integrity in the data that we use. Authentication is making sure that we authenticate users and services and so on, and then match some sort of access rights to that authentication. And then confidentiality is to make sure that the data is kept secure only for those who have the rights to be able to read and uh, write to data. And non-reputation means that it cannot be changed by a non-malicious uh, uh, source. We can also define information systems, protection of information and information systems from unauthorised access. And here we have confidentiality, integrity and availability. C, I, A are the three core tenets of, uh, of information security. So let's define a, a framework for job roles that relate to cybersecurity. And overall, they define uh, around 52 work roles, 33 specialist areas, and there is a number of tasks, skills, knowledge areas, and abilities. But the core areas that uh, we see within side of this is securely provision, or SP, operate and maintain, oversee and govern, protect and defend, analyze, collect and operate and investigate. And the one thing that's common with all of these categories uh, of uh, roles within cybersecurity is they involve data in some form. So in terms of secure provisioning, it might be to analyze logs in a, in a firewall to be able to see when there is attacks and so on. And for investigation, we might be investigating a criminal events, event. And again, we're using uh, data uh, in, with inside those roles. So increasingly, data provides a core element of uh, each of these uh, 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 categories. OK, so let's look at what intelligence really means. So later on in this series of lectures, we'll be looking at machine learning and increasingly we see machines uh, applying some form of intelligence to their, uh, their analysis. Okay, so Industry 4.0 brings us physical uh, uh, systems uh, that are, are virtualized, IoT, cloud computing and cognitive com com computing. And intelligence really uh, differs uh, in terms of the way that it's actually uh, d defined. And this definition here uh, defines that we vary uh, from each other in our ability to understand complex ideas. 
and to adapt to our environment, to learn from experience, to engage with various forms of reasoning and to overcome obstacles by taking thought. So this is a, a generalized form of intelligence and increasingly uh, machines are showing some signs of a human type intelligence and in that the way they can reason. Some of the types of intelligence that we see are naturalist intelligence, that's someone who, who uh, is, has the ability to discriminate between living things and their interaction with the natural world. Uh, musical intelligence, obviously related to, to uh, uh, musical ability. Logical, mathematical intelligence, that's number uh, reasoning uh, abilities. Uh, life smart, interpersonal uh, intelligence, people smart, intrapersonal intelligence, those who have the ability to understand themselves, body kinesis intelligence, that's body smart, uh, linguistic intelligence, word smart, spatial intelligence, picture smart. So in terms of, of the differences between humans and computers, uh, there is often a difference in their cognitive uh, abilities. So in terms of, of learning, humans are good at adapting quickly to uh, situations and can learn new tasks fairly, fairly quickly. Unfortunately, once they've learned them, they be can become bored with uh, tedious repetition. In terms of strategy, humans are generally very good at making, uh, uh, distilling down complex strategies and making them much simpler or creating less complex uh, tasks. In terms of enterprise, uh, computers uh, sometimes struggle in uh, making uh, key uh, decisions, such as with an innovation and enterprise. And creativity, again, humans tend to be better than computers at creative elements, such as uh, creating uh, uh, music and other and uh, uh, paintings. So this was one uh, definition uh, to actually show the different levels of intelligence as we move up from uh, a basic machine level right up to high level uh, human intelligence. And this is where we move from skills to providing rules and then on to knowledge and then finally on to expertise. So it's only when we get into this region uh, is it, does it become important to be able to learn from uh, being an expert and, and around practicing uh, things. The breakthrough happened around here. So we moved up through uh, these levels here where uh, we had uh, uh, machines that were capable of routing uh, telephone calls up into mathematical operations and then translating language from one language uh, to another. And the, and the higher level cognitive areas then we see machines increasingly making strategic decisions for military and strategic uh, reasons. And then up at the, the highest levels, we uh, will see machines capable of conduct, conducting a melody and then machines capable of logical deduction. So machines are increasingly moving up into the higher reaches of where we would define uh, human intelligence. So in terms of humans and computers and uh, for uh, uh, different types of intelligence, uh, spatial abilities are the ability to be able to uh, differentiate between two-dimensional and three-dimensional uh, objects uh, quickly. So for a human it's fairly easy to be able to analyse a picture such as this and to know that this is a 3D uh, picture of two dice and also to look at uh, pictures and to very quickly understand their uh, their structure. 
uh, humans, uh, hu computers will take much more processing to try and make sense of the complexity that we would uh, uh, be able to uh, process fairly, fairly quickly. Uh, there's perception, and perception is to be able to simplify uh, add, uh, uh, things. Uh, and in this case, uh, it's fairly easy to, to abstract in terms of the triangles that are contained uh, within side this simple two-dimensional object. But for a computer, it's a much more difficult to be able to analyse a picture such as this and to make sense that uh, it contains uh, triangles. Memory is an important part of, of intelligence and obviously uh, uh, human uh, intelligence often uh, involves uh, short-term uh, memory for recall and then uh, a deeper linked memory to be able to uh, recall things from, from the past. Okay, so that's been an outline of uh, cyber and intelligence.